Hey everyone, this is Patrick from Trek and Beyond, and I'm here today to talk about 10 tips that will make your travels or backpacking easier in China. Alright, so let me first give you a little background of my experience with China. I lived there for a total of three years. Back in 2008, I moved there for six months. Uh, I came back home and then in uh, 2010 I moved there again for another two and a half years. And I've had a lot of experience while living there, traveling in China and living there. And also while I was away going back there and just backpacking and traveling again. So I thought I'd take the time today to share my experiences, give my advice to you. If you're a first time traveler to China, uh, if you want to backpack there, visit there for a long or short period of time. Now this may not be for people who've already lived there for a long time or have the experience of traveling in China. I'm trying to reach out to people that are just interested in going there and just maybe need a little bit of advice and I kind of want to like help people out with what I've experienced and uh, maybe share some of uh, my tips and just travel stories. Let's get started. These are my top 10 tips and important travel advice for first time travelers. So let me start with number one, social media. As some of you may or may not know, China is a communist country. There's no social media there that we're used to using. For example, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even a Google search. That could be very hard for some people to get used to when they first go traveling there. So what I suggest is a VPN. Having a VPN would allow you access to your social media, which I just mentioned. It's very, very important if you want to have that in your life while traveling there. Um, it's very important to me because I have a travel channel. I'd like to post stuff on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So it was kind of hard if you don't have that there. Uh, what I suggest to do is download an app called NordVPN. You can find it on a Google Play Store or in the App Store. Um, it's, it costs a little bit to use per month. It's not that much, but I totally suggest to get it. It's I find it to be one of the best for the price. When I was there last time for a few months, um, I used NordVPN and it honestly helped me just stay in contact with my friends, post social media, and even access my YouTube while I was there. It's also very important if you want to use Google Maps. Now when I travel China, Google Maps is very important to me. So having the VPN to use while connected to the internet there was a very, very big plus for me. So definitely suggest getting a VPN while traveling in China. Now my number two tip is your Chinese visa. Now there's a few different ways of going about it. Um, I found a way from that suits me the best and getting it from me. So you could either get it at home in your home country, which I did one time back in Canada. I find it it's it's too much of a hassle to do it back at home. I had to go to Toronto and apply for it there. Uh, I had to go back home after, which is around two hours away from Toronto, wait and then go back and pick it up. Uh, that was a few years back that I did that. Uh, and it was pretty pricey too and not very convenient for me. My favorite way of doing it, and it might not suit everyone, but is traveling to Hong Kong as a Canadian you don't need a visa for Hong Kong. You can actually stay there for 90 days. So what I do is, I, when I wanna to travel to China, I first fly to Hong Kong. When I get my bag and get out of the arrivals area, there's a section where you can apply for a Chinese visa there. So what I do is go to the, you can't miss it, you just go to the counter there, it says Chinese visa application, and you hand in your passport and I'm not going to give you the prices right now because every time I go it changes. It's always changing the prices and the rules. So this last time that I went, which was in 2018, I got a two-year Chinese visa 
what I like about this way is I give my passport and pay my fee and they take care of everything so easy for me. I take this time to actually explore and enjoy Hong Kong. I have about two or three days before my visa is done and I can pick it up, which is an awesome opportunity to just go and explore Hong Kong, see what it has to offer, eat some awesome food, go and enjoy the beautiful scenery, go enjoy the awesome city that it is. After two or three days, I'm ready to go pick up my passport and Chinese visa back at the same place at the airport and then continue my journeys on to mainland China. It's honestly, like for me, my the best and favorite way to do it. One thing I also forgot to mention is when I tried to get it back at home in Canada, I had to provide a lot of proof. Like for example, where I was staying, hotel receipts, uh, like return plane tickets, um, where I'm staying, they just, they just required more information and more work from you compared to the Hong Kong way of doing it. I found that way more convenient, way more easier. You kind of don't have the hassle of everything else that you have to worry about. They just kind of take everything, care of everything for you. Another thing I would like to mention is please watch out when your visa expires or how many days you're allowed to stay in China. It always says on the visa after how many days, for example, 30 or 60 days, you have to leave China or cross the border and then you can come back in again. Depending on how long your visa is, you may have a six month visa, one year visa, whatever. Just pay attention to how many days you're allowed to stay in mainland China and when your visa expires. Number three is hotels or hostels. Now, the two favorite ways of, for me to go about it is using booking.com or hostelworld.com. I've been using those for years and honestly, I've been so happy and satisfied with them. Find the best deals, the best hostels or hotels, depending on what I feel like staying in. There's a great selection. You can read all the reviews and just decide from where you want to stay using those two websites. When I travel in China, I love to go the hostel route because honestly, China surprisingly has some of the best hostels I've ever stayed in in my life. There's so much fun. There's some of them are so modern and clean and just very big and very comfortable. When I was younger, I liked to stay in dorm rooms in hostels, but now as I get older, I like to spend a little bit more money and have my own private room. And that's what I did in my last China trip. Now I'm going to talk about the hostel life in China. What I can't recommend enough is being social in the hostels. Now I know it could sound a bit scary being social in a hostel in China. From what I've noticed, there's way more Chinese people traveling in the hostels than actual people from other countries. But don't be scared, honestly, like go in the social room, have a drink, go sit down. There's Chinese people are so friendly. They always came up to me. They always try to talk to me. Even if they couldn't speak English, we always found a way. Uh, translation through another person or even using translate on your phone. Being social and going out of your way to be social in the hostels has made my travel experiences so much more better. You end up being friends with these people. For example, I stayed in Chengdu for over a week and I met a group of Chinese people that were also traveling there and staying for one week. And we ended up doing everything together. We ended up eating together. We ended up going out together. We ended up doing sightseeing together. And that honestly is the best way because if I did that alone, I wouldn't know where to find some of the best food in the city. I was a chef and I love food. So they would take me to the best places to eat that I would have no idea about or even to find. So yeah, that's that was one of the best things about staying in a hostel for me. Just get out there, be social, be friendly, and uh, you'll meet amazing people and see amazing things and try amazing food.
And once again, like I said, if you're scared to talk to Chinese people, there was a few nights where we would sit around the table, we would drink beers, we would share stories, and a lot of it was through using Google Translate. It was actually a really fun and interesting experience, but it's funny how through a translator you can become friends with people that way. And even till now, I still talk with them through um, a WeChat, a, a chatting program on my phone, and we still keep in contact. From what I've noticed too, the people that work at the hostels at the front desk, um, they, I would say most of them, most of the time can speak English. So if you have any questions, they can help you out with like tickets, booking tickets, train tickets, bus tickets, plane tickets, whatever it is, helping you around the city, giving you directions. They're a really great resource. So it's really great to see people that can speak English in the uh, Chinese hostels. My number four tip is SIM cards for your cell phones. Now, when you get there, you'd want to get a SIM card right away. You want to use your phone. You want to have internet, internet access. You want to get your VPN. So what I suggest is going and finding a China mobile. China Mobile is great, they have great prices, good internet service, and it's actually quite easy to get, which I'll explain to you right now. I brought my phone with me, it's an unlocked phone from Canada, and um, you, yeah, you go find the China Mobile, uh, make sure you bring your passport, your unlocked phone, um, and it's gonna be hard maybe to communicate and talk with them, but when, when I got there, uh, the lady working at China Mobile, she could speak English a little bit, but what we ended up doing is she pulled out her phone and started using her translate to communicate with me. So I told her what I want. I said, how long I'm gonna be in China, what kind of internet I want, something cheap, all through her phone, just like through translate, which worked really, really well. So the experience was good. She was really friendly. Uh, the important thing is let them know how long you're staying there. So it's kind of like um, in Canada here where you can just top off your cell phone every month if you don't have a plan. So that's what I did. I said, I'm going to be there for two months. I want unlimited internet access. Phone calls doesn't really matter. The internet was the most important part. So yeah, I don't think they'll cheat you or anything. She set me up with a good plan, but make sure you bring your passport because they need to know who you are. They need to see your identification before they give you that SIM card. Maybe the people at the hostel can help you. Just say, I'm looking for a SIM card. They can tell you where to go, lead you to direction where to go, or give you some advice. Number five is language. Now, for, I'd say a lot of you, it could be pretty intimidating, scary going there without learning, knowing any Chinese. When I lived there, I picked up a few things. The most important thing for me to learn was numbers, counting, dealing with money. How much is this? How much is that? That got me a lot, long way living there. And just like some food things like my favorite kind of food and stuff like that. In the bigger cities like Beijing and Shanghai, there are more Chinese people that can speak English there, but if you're traveling like more rural, like more villages and stuff like that, it's it gets pretty difficult. So like I said, um, translator on your phone is very, very important. Um, get the SIM card, um, download the NordVPN so you can use your Google Translate. That honestly saved me in a lot of situations using that Translate there. Now when it comes to restaurants and stuff like that there's a lot of chinese restaurants that have menus with pictures on them or even like uh, a menu on the wall with pictures of the food that they offer so honestly a lot of the time you just go in just point to what you want even just maybe just taking the time and learning some of the numbers like one to ten and asking like how much is something for example I think that what some of the most important things to learn and use there are do xiao chen, like how much is something, uh, just counting from one to ten. Uh, some of my favorite foods, just just to make life easier when you go to a restaurant. Uh, some the top three foods that I would always say and learn are noodle mian, which is like beef noodles, jiao zi, which is dumplings, and kung pao jiting, which kind of sounds like English, like kung pao chicken. Those are like 
if you learn those, you can find those anywhere in China and you'll be set. And then just simple greetings like ni hao, ni hao ma, like hello, how are you, xie xie, thank you, and zai jian, goodbye. Now, don't call me an expert in Chinese or anything, but just learning those simple things really does make a difference and it can help in your travels. Number six is money. So what I usually do is just bring my credit cards with me, like my Visa, my MasterCard, my Visa debit. And what I do suggest to do is call your banks beforehand, before you go to China. Let them know that your cards will be used in China during your travels. Let them know for how long, or maybe like even some of the cities you're going to, just so if they detect any suspicious activity going on, they don't shut down your cards and you just can't use them anymore. So. That's definitely something I do every time I go to China. You can bring cash with you or get it exchanged, but from what I found going to China this time around is they're starting to use less and less cash compared to when I lived there in 2008 or 2010 where I used cash all the time. Mm, everything's digital now. On their phones, they use an application called WeChat, so they pay for everything with their WeChat. I couldn't believe it like because I haven't been in China in so long from like when I lived there from like 2010. I had a long break where I didn't go there and then it just it just changed all of a sudden and like I was like felt like the only person paying with cash. So you can also use your visa or debits at stores to pay for but going back to the topic again about this WeChat way of paying. I found that some things that I wanted to pay for with cash, for example, there's this one story I wanted to buy a bus ticket and my friend was paying with WeChat and I was paying with cash. I ended up paying more for the ticket. They started charging people more if you want to pay with cash. So what I suggest is it's kind of hard because in order to have money on your WeChat, like you can download the application, it's no problem on your phone, but you need to have a bank account to put money onto your WeChat. So if you have any friends in China, or if you know anyone in China that has WeChat and they have money on their WeChat, what they can do is like, you can give them cash and they can transfer money from their WeChat to your WeChat and you don't need a bank account. So that works really well too. Uh, but if you don't, uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to use cash or just take out money from any ATM there, which usually works. I find B Bank of China, if you find a Bank of China ATM, it worked honestly 100% of the time for me for my Visa, my MasterCard, my debit card to take cash out. My number seven topic is food. Now... Chinese food is honestly my favorite food in the world. I love it. I miss it so much. I could eat it every day. But some of you may not think that. Some of you may think it's weird or looks weird or tastes weird. So as a backpacker, when I was traveling in hostels and stuff like that, and if you're on a budget too, a good idea for you is to maybe go to a grocery store. You can find a lot of the stuff in the grocery stores in China that you could find back home. I was really surprised. Um, just yeah go to the grocery store buy bottles of water it's way cheaper there than at a hostel buy some vegetables you can even buy like cheese bread chips snacks pretty much anything um, take it with you eat it at the hostel hostels always usually sell westernish kind of food too so you can't go wrong with eating some of the hostels there I'll give you an example when I was in Hong Kong last time I didn't buy anything from the hostel because they were charging pretty ridiculous prices for bottles of water, beer, or coffee, or anything. So I just took a five minute walk down the street, went to the grocery store, found water bottles, coffee, food, anything for way, way less cheaper. Just go to the grocery store, stock up, put it in your hostel room, and you'll save way more money than buying it at the actual hostel. If you don't, if you're kind of scared and don't really know which restaurants to go into, you walk by one, you're kind of intimidated, just go in. Like I said before in my one of my previous tips, a lot of the restaurants have 
nice, awesome pictures on the side of the wall of the food they offer. So just go in there and point that. Or they have a menu too with pictures on it. So just open the menu, show the waitress what you want, just point it. It's really easy. Another thing is to, like I said, being social in hostels, meet people, you go out with them. They, Chinese people are so happy to go with you, show you their country, show you what kind of food they, they offer. Just go with them. They do all the ordering for you. You just sit back, relax, and eat the food. Enjoy your time with them. Use your phone. Uh, look up f foods on your phone in English on Google. Uh, go to the images. Pop up the image. Show. Go into the restaurant. Sh maybe show that. Like if it's a, say for example, you're looking for rice. Look up rice. Okay, you don't know how to say it in Chinese. Show the picture. You uh, want some noodles. Type in noodles. Pop up the picture. Show the picture of the noodles. That's another tip that I could give that I also used a lot, actually. Number eight, packing. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this. I have a special video I made about how I pack for China and a, a backpack that I reviewed that I use for China. I'll put in the description below a link to the video so you can maybe watch it and how I pack my backpack. But what I have to say is, China is a very diverse country when it comes to climate. You've got deserts, you've got mountains, you've got beaches, you've got everything in between. Like China has everything. So you want to pack right. It doesn't matter what time of the year you go because in the winter you can go to South China and it's warm there. Um, so, and then maybe you want to go explore somewhere where it's cold, you know. So what I usually do is like I have my 65 liter backpack. That's enough for me. Um, I pack for fall, winter, spring, summer. Honestly, that's the best advice I can give. I'm not going to go too much further into detail about this. Like I said, uh, I have a really good video of how I pack for China. I'll link it and I re really do recommend watching that. That being said, it's also what kind of a traveler you are. I'm a backpacker. I love having my backpack with me. So it could be different to maybe if you just want to go to Beijing and stay in a, whole, in a hotel for one week. That's totally different kind of packing from how I pack. I'm a wanderer. I'm a trekker. I'm a traveler. So that's also where it kind of is different so i can't really give you advice on how to pack um everyone has their own kind of way own kind of travels different style of travels one thing i do recommend is if you're the kind of traveler that i am along with your big backpack that you have always have a day pack so you leave your big backpack in your hostel you put all your important stuff everything you want in your day pack pack you go exploring traveling for the day doesn't weigh as much it's very handy put your camera get in there just a more convenient way of traveling you're gonna want to spend invest in a good backpack don't go out there on the internet finding the cheapest deals the best deals try to look for a good brand backpack the one i like to use is jack wolfskin it's a nice german brand but really just put in the extra money invest in a good backpack the worst thing is having your backpack break on you during your travels that happened to me i bought a cheaper backpack one time during the middle of the travels i had to, it just broke on me the straps broke it was it was a disaster ever since then i learned my lesson put the money in get a good backpack and it will make your travels way easier hassle free trust me on this one now number nine is transportation this is a very important one there's a lot of ways to travel around China. You can take train, you can take bus and plane. What I suggest to do now is travel by plane. It's very cheap, very convenient and way faster. Back in the day when I was traveling, I took the train and bus a lot. It takes a long, long time sometimes, eight hours, even train from Hong Kong. To Beijing which I did quite a bit 24 hours it's a nice sleeper train but it's, it's not for a lot of people and sometimes you just don't have the time for that when it comes to safety I say traveling by plane is the way to go traveling by plane 
is way cheaper now. Sometimes the price of a bus or train ticket is more, even the same price as a plane ticket. What I suggest to do is use a website called Ctrip or the English version trip.com. You'll find all kinds of plane tickets on that website for a very good price. Now I want to talk about safety. Some of the places where you travel in China, the roads are very dangerous. And I do have to say, the way people drive over there is, is kind of crazy. I've been through a lot of pretty bad experiences there. So especially in the mountains and going to some places like that, the roads there are pretty dangerous. Now I'm going to share an experience that happened to me this last time in 2018 when I traveled from Chengdu to a beautiful place called Bi Pingao. Uh, on the way back, um, I got into a very bad accident on the bus. So what happened was we, we had our bus ticket booked and everything on the way back to Chengdu after our trip. And there was a lot of traffic and we had to go through mountains and the roads were pretty bad. So I guess, I don't know what happened, but it was kind of just like a chain reaction. Um, somewhere in front of us, someone stopped really fast and then a car hit that truck and our bus hit that car. And it was just a massive tr uh, train reaction. And it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like the impact was so fast and hard that like everyone on the bus kind of just like whipped their head against the back of the seat. And yeah, I've never had that happen to me. But I've had other friends who have traveled in China or other places like Thailand where they have gotten into bus accidents. Uh, after that, I've kind of tried to stay away from traveling by bus in China. That kind of gave me a scare. So what I do suggest is travel by plane. It's probably the safest way. I also have a video clip of the accident that I got into and you can see kind of what happened. All right, I was just on the bus on the way back to Chengdu and we got in a pretty big accident. Uh, luckily I was on the bus and nobody was hurt. Just banged my head against the seat a bit. This is the truck that hit us from behind. I was sitting like second from the, not the last, but the one before the last, after the last seats there. Just hit us from behind there. I was sitting like right there. It's the bus that we were taking. What happened there is like that truck, I guess, stopped really fast and then hit this and then, then hit this and then it, our bus hit that and then, oh man. Luckily, like no one's hurt. Oh, that was pretty scary. I've never been in like a accident like that before. Now I just gotta wait. I don't know what to do. I guess someone else is, some other bus is picking us up, but this is not good. Like another look from this side. And then it went all the way like down here to this car. This car is like really fucked up. Now I'm gonna talk about taxis. Uh, when I lived in China, I used a taxi a lot. But now they have something like we have in Canada, Uber. It's actually called Didi. I used it a lot with my friend when I visited her in China. You just look, you can download it on your phone too. Just look for Didi in Google and you can download the app. It's yeah, it's pretty much just like Uber, you know. You put your credit card information in and it's like just how we would use Uber back at home. Very convenient way of traveling. I found it to be cheaper than using an actual taxi, which is in the first place pretty cheap in China. Um, but yeah, that's a good way of going. And if you don't want to use that app, if you don't trust it or anything, if you just don't want to have it on your phone, taxi is also a fine way of traveling. It's really cheap. There's they're everywhere. Just make sure you know where you're going. You kind of have written in Chinese your ad, your address your, that you want to go to, your destination, a uh, famous landmark. Just show it to your taxi driver. Or even use your Google Translate or your Google Maps and just show it to your your driver and he'll know, he'll know where to take you. And just make sure, because I had a lot of bad experiences with this too, is when you get in that taxi cab, get them to put the uh, the meter down so they don't 
cheat you or charge you more than you have to pay. Um, just what I do usually is tell him my destination and if I don't see him put that little meter down in his car, then I know there's something fishy going on. So I just politely tell him, point to that, put it down. If they don't want to, tell them to stop, get out of the car, find a different taxi. Number 10, how to behave. Like I said before, China is a communist country. Just use your common sense. Don't go in there bashing the government, talking bad stuff about China. Just go there, use your common sense, be a good traveler. China is very, very safe. Honestly, I sometimes felt safer there than the city where I'm from in Canada. Walking the streets at night, walking in villages, dark, alone at night. I never felt threatened. I never felt scared at all when I traveled there. I do have to say, China is very, very safe to travel. So that's a very important thing. Don't be surprised. It's very common and normal for people to stare at you, people to look at you, or even people wanting to touch you. <laughs> Some places in China, it's they never see white people or people from any other country, you know, for me as like a big white man, they're just always like staring at me or like, what are you doing here? You know, so it's very common. Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. It's just, it's a pretty normal thing. I have a funny story about the whole touching thing. When I first went to China with my friend, she had um, long, just blonde hair, you know, so that was like very special for Chinese people. And they'd always want to like touch it. They always want to feel it or, but don't take offense to that. They love seeing that. It's very different for them. They've never seen that before in some places, maybe. And yeah, you just have to also remember like yellow or gold is just like a very lucky color for them too. Try to like be accepting of it. If they stare at you, just maybe just like try to wave your hand and say hi or like just remember that like they don't see this kind of stuff every day. A lot of Chinese people will want to come up to you and talk to you, use their English, practice their English with you. They love doing that. Just be open and if someone comes up and wants to talk to you, just remember they just, they're interested in you. They want to know about you. They want to know about your country. They want to pra practice their English with you. They want to know how maybe you can help improve their English, give them some tips. It's, it was a really fun experience sometimes. Sometimes I would sit at the hostel and I'd have a person come up to me and just start talking to me because they're just so interested in you and they just want to have a conversation so. so those are my top 10 travel tips for you now there are a few things more that i want to talk about that didn't make it into those top 10 some random points when i travel i like to take a little bit of medicine with me uh, i like to take uh, ibuprofen advil for headaches maybe something for like a cold or a flu, just have that kind of stuff. It's always good to have. Along with that, I do suggest bringing Imodium with you because you just never know. You don't know where you're gonna eat in China. And trust me, I've had many experiences where Imodium saved my life. Um, yeah, so you always wanna bring that with you. And if anything like that also happens, uh, there's also like medicines like electrolytes or something that keep you hydrated. They help you heal faster. They make you feel better. Even if you have food poison or anything, those electrolytes, it's like, like a little, uh, comes in a little pouch, just like powdery, mix it with water. It helps you, keeps you hydrated, drink lots of water. But definitely bring Imodium with you, especially if you're on those long bus rides. Now, a very, very, very important thing while traveling in China is, surprisingly, carry toilet paper with you all the time. I learned that the hard way. When I first went to China and I went to a toilet, I looked around, no toilet paper. I thought, oh, maybe they just forgot to put it in here. It happened a few more times I looked and no, shopping malls, restaurants, anywhere you go, there's usually no toilet paper in your backpack, in your pocket, even take a whole bunch off of the roll, put it in your pocket, shove it in your backpack. In your backpack, bring a roll with you everywhere you go. Trust me, 
take it from me, I learned from my mistakes, bring toilet paper with you everywhere you go in China. You also maybe want to consider um, taking some immunization or shots before you go. Uh, I just know I have like this immunization card that I went to my doctor before I went traveling. Just make sure you have your hepatitis shots. Another good one to have is uh, like a tetanus shot. You can even consider getting your rabies shot because there are straight dogs running around in China or Asia, but I never got that. So um, yeah, there's also something to consider about just know what you're already immunized for and what not. For the most part, you can dress pretty much however you want. I don't really have any advice on that. When it comes to style or appearance, nobody really cares in China. Also tattoos. I have tattoos. It's okay to show tattoos in China. From my experience, from what I know, they don't take offense to it. You can go to hot springs. You can go to massage um, places and do show your tattoos. It's okay. I haven't really had a problem with that. Maybe just the last thing I'd like to say is it's not expensive in China. Um, so the money you have at home, you saved up for your travel, spend it on food eat your heart out, drink your heart out. Honestly, the alcohol is so cheap in China. You can buy a beer for like under a dollar. They have so many like cool clothes to buy for cheap. They have night markets, street markets, fake markets that you can go check out. It's really great for that kind of stuff. Those are my top 10 travel tips for you when you want to go visit China or like going for the first time. From my experience, everything I kind of said to you will help or did help me. I kind of wish back in 2008 I had some kind of advice or kind of knew what I was getting into or what China had to offer but through experience you learn and I thought I'd kind of just share with you my experience and hopefully it will help you for your style of travel. If it's backpacking, if it's not, maybe you can just remember what I said today and just kind of use it while you're traveling along. I'll be posting more Trek and Beyond videos of my travels in China. Like I said, I'll put the link for the backpack review and how I pack for China in the description below. There'll be a link for that video. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch and hopefully you can use this information and it will help you. And once again, thanks for watching. And if you could, that'd be great if you could take the time to like, comment, and subscribe. That would help me a lot. If you have any comments, please comment below. Write anything you want to know in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer you to the best of my knowledge if you want to know about anything else or if you just want to chat or anything like that. And yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And I will see you next time.